Hello, my name is Jordan Kudlak, and I did my evidence-based synthesis paper poster on oral care hygiene and the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia in critical care settings. Ventilator-associated pneumonia is one of the most preventable complications related to mechanical ventilation, and we as nursing students are taught that proper oral care should be performed in our morning care routine for the safety and comfort of our patients. And the problem that we're looking at right now is that Nurses need to provide sufficient oral hygiene to the mechanically ventilated patients to prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia from occurring. And nurses are also on the forefront of the oral hygiene line, so it's up to us to stop it in its tracks. You don't see doctors or anyone else really doing, except, doing it except for maybe the nurses' aides, but ultimately we are in charge of the health care, oral health care for our patients. Uh, also, ventilator-associated pneumonia occurs within 48 hours or maybe more of being intubated. Therefore, starting proper oral care from the start will help decrease the complication from occurring. And the literature search down here in this corner, I use CINAHL, PubMed, and Google Scholar. CINAHL gave me the most results related to the topic, as Google Scholar did not. Um, the results were also narrowed down being within the years of 2004 and 2014, and they all had to have full text articles available. The keywords used uh, also included oral care, oral hygiene, mouth care, ventilator, ventilator associated pneumonia, pneumonia, critical care, and intensive care unit. Sometimes ventilator associated pneumonia was substituted as VAP. And there's also a table in the middle, which is my synthesis of my evidence. Uh, it's all the information I gather from the articles that I've analyzed regarding the clinical question. Each article had relatively the same purpose, which was to determine if a specific protocol would decrease the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia. Each study had their own tool that they used. Some used swabs, some used regular toothbrushes, some used suctioning. So it all depended on which they used, which was in their protocol. Each study was taking place in an intensive care unit of some sort, whether it was a medical intensive care unit or a regular intensive care unit. And also, each study had similar variables consisting of the nurse compliance to the study being performed, variations in toothbrushing done by the nurses, and the fact that staff members may change their behavior when knowing they're being studied. The results of the first study, which are right here, showed that the rate of ventilator-associated pneumonia decreased by 0.62% in a total of 345 patients. And also, because of these results, the hospital actually implemented the protocol that was used in the study as a hospital-wide protocol for oral care. In the second study performed by Garcia and colleagues, it showed that the risk and incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia were greatly decreased with an oral care protocol. And also, it showed that infection can be avoided for a long period of time with proper oral care that was instituted. And the last study uh, done by Mori and colleagues, it showed the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia was lower in the group that received the oral care protocol treatment, which is also known as the intervention group, as opposed to the control group who did not receive the oral care treatment, but the receive regular tooth brushing. Okay. Ultimately, for recommendations for clinical practice and for nurses, nurses should be performing oral care on mechanically ventilated patients every eight hours or once per shift. We know that we're supposed to perform it once per shift on every patient, but it's specifically important for mechanically ventilated patients because of the bacteria that may colonize in the mouth. In the end, this ends up saving thousands of lives from applying ventilator associated pneumonia. And nurses working on units that have mechanical ventilators should know the risk factors for developing ventilator-associated pneumonia. They could also have maybe a thing on a bulletin board that shows it in each room, on each ventilator, something to show each nurse and even the techs the risk factors for developing this. And lastly, some worksheets should be created for the nurses to use in each room that could also help uh, increase the performance of oral care on their patients. Um, and lastly, in the conclusions, it was found that following an adequate hospital life protocol on oral care can reduce the risk of different organisms colonizing in the oral cavity of a patient who is on mechanical ventilation 
therefore stopping Valair associated pneumonia in its tracks. Lastly, these are my references. Thank you very much.